Hi, my name is Christina Andre and I'm currently a research associate and lecturer at Technical University Dresden. In this video, I'm going to offer you a short summary of my article Problematizing War towards a reconstructive critique of war as a problem of deviance. The article has just been published in the latest issue of the Review of International Studies and I hope that my video might serve as a teaser to get you interested in reading it. So, how do we think about war? That is, at its most basic, what I'm wondering about in the article. And more specifically, I examine how we critically think about and address war as a problem. Now, of course, we have a lot of research in IR, including a lot of critical research, on precisely what we think is problematic in or about war. And the answers to this what question first and foremost concern the various kinds of violences that war entails. Now, without wanting to subtract from this what question and its critical answers, my argument in the article is that we should also ask the question of how war and its violences are problematic. To answer this how question, in the article, I look more closely at what I call the logics of the problem of war. One such logic, which I believe to be particularly important in contemporary international politics and also in IR scholarship, is the logic of war as a problem of deviance. And therefore, in the article, I focus on this logic to highlight a number of its aspects. Firstly, there is the dichotomy of deviance and normalcy as a structuring principle of the problem of war. Following this principle, war is problematic insofar as it contravenes behavioral norms, and thus insofar as it is a deviant, not a normal kind of conduct. Next, there are the underlying assumptions of this structuring principle. The first underlying assumption of war as a problem of deviance is that it is a problem that can be addressed, alleviated and potentially even abolished by human action. And secondly, such action to correct the problem of war must be taken from the outside of the problem, from a position that is external to war. There are different means by which this correction of war as a problem of deviance can be achieved. But one crucial means is the production and dissemination of empirical knowledge about war. And just as a side note, of course, this idea is very familiar to us in IR, which is a discipline that claims to be in charge of the systematic analysis of war's causes with the aim and hope of alleviating war's consequences. Finally, who's in charge of producing this empirical knowledge about war and disseminating it? It's subjects of knowledge whose capacity for knowing about and dealing with war depends on their being external to the problem at stake. So in sum, the logic of war as a problem of deviance assumes that war is an abnormal kind of conduct that can, however, be corrected through the production of empirical knowledge about war by knowledgeable subjects situated to the outside of the problem. Ultimately, War as a problem of deviance is a particular and particularly modern project. It is a project of decreasing the harm done by war and vice versa of increasing the scope of human agency over war. And I believe that it is with regard to this modern project that we can start to see what might be problematic about war as a problem of deviance. Now, historically, even though humans had for a very long time seen war as problematic, they also, for the longest time of that, thought that there was very little they could do about it. And therefore, the assumption that we have today, namely that there is something that we humans can do to reduce the harm caused by war, is really an achievement. However, and as various critical literatures have shown, this achievement comes at a price. For one, the logic of war as a problem of deviance renders problematic some wars by normalizing other wars. Secondly, this logic occurs agency over war to some by denying this agency to others. And finally, within this logic, it is impossible to make sense of war's constitutive role within modernity. And here I'm thinking in particular of how war as a problem of deviance builds upon and reproduces more general assumptions about modernity as inherently rational, civilized and progressively nonviolent. With the problematic aspects of war as a problem of deviance thus laid out, 
My aim in the article is to open up this problem of war for critique. And to this end, the article offers two critical analytical tools and also an empirical example. Now, I won't go into all of the details of these offerings here, but allow me to just say a little bit about either one of them. The critical tools I suggest are problematization and genealogy, two Foucauldian tools which are amply discussed in various literatures in IR and also beyond IR. And in the article, I therefore offer a rereading of both of them to make them suitable for my particular purposes. Let's start with problematization. Problematization is a concept that refers to the processual emergence of problems. And in my reading of it, the concept highlights the contingencies and the conflicts inherent in the processes through which our problems come about. It thus helps us to grasp the not necessary and the deeply political nature of our problems. To put this concept into analytical action, I turn to genealogy. Genealogy, of course, is a well-known Foucauldian method for showing that that which seems timeless and natural actually has a history, and hence that it is also changeable. Using genealogy to study the historically contingent emergence of our contemporary problems, I argue that we can not only question these problems' presumably self-evident nature, but also strengthen our agency vis-a-vis -vis them. In combination, Problematization and genealogy amount to a particular kind of reconstructive critique of the logics of the contemporary problem of war. By probing the contingent and conflictual becomings of these logics, this critique enables us, as Foucault once put it, to change the given terms of the problem. Next, I use these two tools to trace the emergence of war as a problem of deviance in a crucial example within the wider genealogy of the problem of war. This is the example of the Carnegie Endowments Commission of Inquiry into the Balkan Wars of 1912 and 1913. I was very fortunate to be able to conduct archival research in the Carnegie Endowments archives. And based on this research, in the article, I highlight different elements of the Carnegie Commission's problematization of war, its frames, underlying assumptions, ways of knowing and subjects of no knowledge. My aim in doing so is to put into question the foundations, the scope and the means of the modern understanding of war as a problem of deviance, and thereby to make them available for critical reconstruction. To conclude, my argument is not that war somehow wasn't a problem. Rather, I argue that because war is problematic, we in IR would do well to look more closely at precisely how it is so. With this, I hope to make a twofold contribution to critical IR scholarship on war. Existing critical feminist, post-structuralist and post-anti-colonial scholarship on war is really rich, and it has criticized, for example, the static and state-centric frames that mainstream IR applies to war, and it has highlighted the various issues that exceed the confines of these analytical frames and the various violences that go beyond them. With my article, I hope to offer a twofold extension to these critical insights. Firstly, the analysis of the problematization of war that I offer shifts the question from what the problem of war consists in to how war is rendered problematic. That is, through which logics, based on which assumptions, through which ways of knowing, and by whom. Secondly, the article proposes a reflexive twist to existing critiques. So rather than denouncing the role of others' ideas in the reproduction of war, it demands that we question our own critical logics for rendering war problematic and to either justify or amend these logics. So these are some of the main arguments of my article in a nutshell. And if you want to know more and end up reading the article, I would be really keen to hear from you and learn about what you think. I've put my email address on the slide so you can reach me. And for now, thank you for listening.